Hello everyone, my name is Mark. They're going to be looking at the higher level 2022 physics paper. I'm going to be looking at question two. So question two here is going to be an experimental question. And in this case, it's going to be centering around Boyle's law, which is kind of one of the more um, kind of uncommon questions. So yeah, let's get straight into part I here. So having a look here at part I, we're going to be asked to state Boyle's law, which in this case is just a simple definition. So in order to get full marks here, you're going to be required to include a few buzz terms and they are as follows. For a fixed mass of gas measured under constant conditions of temperature, um, we know that pressure is actually going to be inversely proportional to the volume. Now, I've done a lot of underlining here, but it's actually most of this is actually very important um, to include. In this case, the, your key terms here is that for a fixed mass of gas measured at constant temperature, or in this way, or in this case, under constant conditions for temperature, um, pressure is going to be inversely proportional to um, volume, or you could say vice versa as well. Similarly, you could represent this using a simple uh, formula, but you need to give it a little bit more of an explanation, which in this case would be PV is going to equal some, um, some constant. So in this case, that's going to be another way of representing this formula. So for doing this, you're going to get a total of six marks, and the breakdown goes as follows. There was four marks for getting the first um, kind of thing correct, I guess, in this case, which is going to be um, stating for a... Um, uh, for a fixed mass of gas, so that's going to get you your first four marks. And then similarly, you get another two marks here for getting your um, your correct term. In this case, it's going to be the pressure is inversely proportional to the volume. So moving now on to part two here, we're going to be asked to draw a label diagram um, of how the apparatus was arranged in this experiment. So the experiment in question here is going to be Boyle's Law. So for our label diagram here, there's going to be a few key terms that we're going to include. And what I've done is drawn it out here first, and I have the headings that you need to include here. And I'm just going to kind of connect what's important here. And um, basically what we're going to start with is we're going to have our pump here on the right-hand side, so our air pump, and this is going to be represented by this thing on the right-hand side here. Um, and that's a way of, you know, in, you know changing your pressure here um, in the system. Um, another important thing to to know here is you're going to have your pressure gauge which is going to be this system over here as well kind of in the middle and that's going to be a way of measuring in this case the pressure which is an important thing to include the final thing that we're going to need to include now is going to be um, a means for measuring um, your volume which in this case is going to be represented um, by this air column over here and also this measuring scale as well so basically what happens is by changing um, by you know changing the pressure in it what's going to happen is this level of oil which is also down here is going to change and fluctuate which means that the volume inside of this um, this apparatus is also going to change, which can be seen by the measuring scale um, beside this air column here. And it means that we can have a way of changing the pressure and seeing the resultant change in pressure and the resultant change in, um, in volume as well. And that allows us to actually show that Boyle's Law holds. So in this case, there was nine marks going and the breakdown goes as follows. There was three marks going for showing a means of measuring P, which in this case is going to be your pressure gauge. You get another three marks as well for showing a means of measuring your volume, which is going to be the the system we have over here on the left hand side which is going to be your air column and your measuring scale. Finally there's going to be another three marks going for a method uh, or means to say of changing your pressure or your volume in this case we went for pressure which is going to be our air pump. So moving on to part three here we're going to be asked why is it actually necessary for the column of air to have a uniform diameter. So this is an important thing to know here because what we were talking about previously is uh, we have the definition for Boyle's law and now we're actually being asked well why do we need to have a uniform diameter here. So the answer that's going to be required here and the reasoning behind this uniform diameter is so that we can ensure that volume is going to be proportional here to L. Now, just to make a little comment on it, L actually in this case is going to be um, your length. So basically length in this instance is going to be showing that um, it's just an important proportionality that you need to include here. And if we were to change that uniform diameter um, and make it kind of different in different places, we wouldn't be able to show that the volume is proportional to, uh, inversely proportional to, say, to the pressure, which would result in kind of, we wouldn't be able to actually prove Boyle's Law. So for doing this, you would get a total of three marks. And the important takeaway here is that it's needed to show that the volume is proportional to length. So moving now on to part four, here we're going to be asked to do is to draw a suitable graph that's going to show or should I say verify Boyle's law. And in this case, whenever we see something like this saying it's going to verify um, a proportional relationship like the one that we are seeing in this uh, for Boyle's law, what you can expect is that it should go through the origin all going well. Um, so yeah, that's just an important thing to note. But the first thing we're going to do here is we're going to look at all of the data that we were given in the question and see if we have to make any changes to it because sometimes we have to kind of alter it and get it into a form that we can actually use for our graph here. 
So what I've done here is I've actually drawn out a small table that we're going to actually use to kind of change some of the information, some of the data given to us in the question into a form that we can actually use for our calculations. And the first thing that we're going to have to note here is that we're actually really interested in one over our length. So I'll just write it down here and one over our pressure. So we're actually really interested in the, the reciprocal. That's what uh, the reciprocal. So we're really interested in the reciprocal of length and pressure. So that means that we have to take all the information given to us in the question, which is all just going to be kind of the standard values we're given the length in centimeters and the pressure in kilopascals, and we need to get the uh, one over it, if you will. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take you through an example of uh, one over length, and then we can go from there. So taking one over our length here, and I'm just going to write down here in a different color, um, I'll give you a little example. So in the question, we're actually told that the first kind of um, the first kind of piece of information is we're given a length here that is 15 centimeters. So what you can have is one over 15 here. And whenever you plug this just straight into your calculator, very simply, you're going to get an answer of 0 0.067. And that value is what we're going to be interested in. And we just have to repeat this process for all of our lengths and also all of our kilopascals. So what I'm going to do now is go and fill out each of these one by one. So if we take one over the first length, which is 15 centimeters, as you've already seen, we're going to get 0 0.067. So that's our first, um, our first reciprocal of length. And then going on from there, you're going to get 0 0.05 and 0 0.04, 0 0.033. And you're also then going to get 0 0.029. And then finally, a 0 0.025. We now have to do the same thing for our pressures. We have to get the reciprocal of all of them. And it's just going to be following kind of the same uh, routine as we did with the lengths. What we're going to have here is the first value is reciprocal. It's going to be 0 0.0028. And I'm just going to write it a little bit like that because these are actually very, very small numbers with, um, you know, a couple of decimal places uh, or a couple of zeros, should I say. So I'm just going to write them like this. Our next one here is going to be 0 0.0044. And we're then going to have a 0 0.0047. 0 0.0056, a 0 0.0065, and then finally a 0 0.0074. Four. So all of these are really small values for um, our pressure here because we're going to be doing one over and then our pressures are quite large numbers. So one over 360, which is this first one, um, this first value here, it's actually a very small number. So um, we're going to tackle that later on. We're going to tackle that when we're drawing our graph. But now that we have all of the information in a form that we can use, we can go ahead and start constructing our graph. Now, the reason that I converted our length and our pressure into the reciprocals is actually two different ways you could do this. You can actually approach it from uh, plotting the pressure versus one over the length, which is what I'm going to be doing now. Or you could also plot um, length versus one over pressure. These are both completely valid, um, they're completely valid uh, ways of doing it. They, they achieve the same result. Um, and in this case, we just need to verify Boyle's law. So what we're going to be doing here is plotting our pressure versus one over our length. And the first thing to know here is it's quite important to include your uh, units. So pressure is going to be, in this case, measured in kilopascals. And one over our length is going to be in, uh, one over our length is going to be in centimeters to the minus one, or you could just say one over centimeters as well. That also works. And what we're going to do now is go ahead and start plotting our points. So here is the required graph to verify Boyle's law. And in this case, the reason it's going to verify Boyle's law is it's going to go through our origin here, which is an important thing to note. So what I've done here is just plotted our points as usual, taking our one over our length as our x value and our uh, pressure here as our um, y value. And in this case, we get this kind of um, kind of this image here where we're going to have our line of best fit going through all the points bar one, which is a little bit um, off to the side. And that's completely fine. And in this case, yeah, this is kind of the graph that's required here to get um, to get your full marks as you're proving and you're verifying Boyle's law. So yeah, for getting this all right, you're going to get a total of 12 marks and the breakdown goes as follows. You've got three marks for getting your table correct. And the important thing to note for your table is that you need to include values for one over L or for one over P. You can do either. I've did both in that case, just so I can have a look at it. And it's important that you include and notice your measurements while you're doing that. Building on that as well, you're going to get three more marks for getting your graph kind of just in the right order, I guess, before you even plot your points. So that's going to be including the uh, labeled axes, making sure you include your units on them making sure that the kind of gaps between or the jumps between each of your um, numbers are going to be kind of proportionate. Um, and that's going to get you another three marks. You get three more marks for plotting your points correctly. And then you get a final three marks for getting your line of best fit. So in this case, yeah, a nice, easy total of 12 marks going. 
So having a look now at part five here, we're going to be asked to actually explain how the graph itself verifies Boyle's law. So what we need to do now is actually take a look at the information in the table um, and in the graph itself and kind of actually, you know, explain why this is the case. So then we're going to verify um, Boyle's law and the fact that, you know, how does the graph actually do that is, you know, there's just a simple takeaway here. And it's the fact that there's actually going to be a straight line that's going to exist that passes through that origin. That line of best fit that we previously drew, that purple line, if you look at it, actually, it's going to pass through all of those points. It's going to be a lovely straight line and it's going to go through your um, slope if you were lucky, hopefully. And once you've done that, um, it actually is going to show that there's a, um, you know, a proportionality there, which thereby verifies Boyle's law. So yeah, for this, you're going to get a total of three marks, and all you really need to include the, is um, the fact that it is a straight line that's going to pass through the origin. So moving on now to part six here, we're going to be asked to look at the data. And actually, you know, the question here is going to be about the data. We're being told that one of those points is actually inconsistent. Um, and we're going to be asked what or which of those data points is inconsistent. So what we need to do is take a look at our graph again in order to have a kind of understand, is there any of those points a little bit off the line? So coming back to our graph here from previously, we're going to be trying to figure out which of these points is a little bit inconsistent, which is a little bit different. And the one that's going to be jumping out at me um, right away is actually this point here. And the reason it's jumping out at me is, well, it's the only one below the line, but it's actually quite a distance away from the line itself, which means that to me anyway, it's going to be um, the inconsistent data point here. So running this out in just kind of plain old English, what you're going to have here is that the second data point actually is going to be the one that is inconsistent, which is the one that we were looking at previously. In this case, L is going to be 20 centimeters. And um, what you can see is when you plug that in, that the data point that we were looking at is actually the second data point, um, which we came to the conclusion was uh, inconsistent. So for coming to this conclusion, you're going to get a total of three marks. And all you had to include was the fact that it's the second data point or that it's when the length is 20. And finally, we move on to part seven, which in this case is going to be asking us, how do we treat this data point when we were drawing the graph? So in this case, the real answer here is that we're just going to ignore it. And the reason we ignored it is because all those points, all we're, we're actually looking for the line of best fit. So if one of them's off of it a wee bit, we actually don't mind that much. So we, in reality, we actually just ignored it. And for getting this, you're getting a total of four marks, which is actually lovely because there's four marks just for saying two words here. And um, so yeah.